Greetings and salutations and welcome to that Inventor video! Today I'm going to be covering Joints vs Constraints and kind of just a bit of an introduction to both. It'll probably become like a little mini-series like I did with Wildments. But yeah, just before that, kind of a bit of an update with what's been happening because I've kind of been just a bit uh, at the moment. Covid's just been really quite demotivating and with me still being at college, it's technically the summer holiday, but I'm still having to work and so I'm having to revise because I have my finals are actually at this are actually not really final they're the start of my second year of college so that's less than fun and also there's some other kind of major things happening those guys at the ambassador hub will have a better idea of what's been happening but yeah it's been pretty crazy and then to add to it i've re-recorded this video because the actual video didn't actually record well because thank you shadow play thank you lots so yeah let's get into it so constraints versus joints what do they do? Well, they remove degrees of freedom. And we can show degrees of freedom really quite easily just by going to the eye properties of the part or the occurrence. And if you just go to occurrence, go to degrees of freedom, click apply, and then you see a little triad appear. And you've got three arrows and three curly arrows. The, the straight arrows represent degrees of translation, which are three, x, y, and z, and then you've got three, the three rotations, which is rotation around x, y, and z. Pretty simple. And so far, that's pretty much, they can all freely move around. Um, we kind of need to change that because any constraints you make will kind of be relative, and so if you ground one thing, it gives you a really good foundation to start with. Um, so yeah, grounding. Grounding is pretty simple. You've got two ways of doing it. There's a debate of which is better. Some people like to gr uh, ground it uh, to the origin axis of the assembly. Some people just say grind, a uh, not ground, ground apart, and doesn't really matter because they're all locked in space. So if you see here, I can just ground this part here, and you see it's not going to move anywhere because it is physically locked in that place, and anything around it will be constrained relative to that fixed point. Some people don't like it, some people like it. I've done both. The other way to do it is to grab a constraint and, which one's this? Demo two. So, and then just constrain the x-axis to the x-axis of the origin and click apply. And then constrain the z-axis to the z-axis and click apply. I'm going to click cancel that. And there you go. So now what you can now see is this now has no degrees of freedom. If I actually go into the eye properties, go into the occurrences and go into degrees of freedom, click apply. Nothing will appear because there are no degrees of freedom. There is nothing there to do. And that's pretty makes sense. So yeah, now you move into constraints and constraints remove degrees of freedom. And so what you can now do is say we, we start with the joint first and it brings up this lovely dialog box. It's always defaults to automatic, which is good and bad, but it's just a good habit because if you, to define it because if you know what you're going to work with then it makes it very predictable what it's going to do and we use a cylindrical joint and then we just basically join the two center points of the two discs here and click apply what you can see now is that this can now move left to right and it can also spin but it cannot Move side now. It can't move side to side. It can't move up and down. It's been very particular, and you can see that now with the degrees of freedom glyph. And you see that that's now all done with one joint, and that's the beauty of joints. Joints are really more should be seen as a group of constraints, which is why generally it's a good idea to if you understand constraints in the first place. It just makes this so much easier to understand. And the debate about it is some people love constraints purely because of the amount of control they give you. Constraints give you individual degrees of freedom control whereas joints affect multiple and then there are those who are like joints because it's nice and neat it turns three could three individual constraints into one joint which is far quicker especially if you've got a thousand plus occurrences in the in an assembly file that just makes your tree much smaller and i'm trying to do hand gestures but you can't see them but yeah you can do the same concept here that i did with the cylindrical we just click the centers the axis now merged click okay and I can see, we can see they're now done there. And you see, that's pretty much the same joint done. However, 
yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of. However, there is one other thing that constraints do have that joints don't. And this comes down to more inventor studio kind of animation things. Because what you can do with constraints is do what's called drive the constraints, which if I go into this mate here and edit, you see there's an offset. As you can see, if I just type in turn, you see, and it's now offsetting from the axis. Click OK. Well, this is where it gets important. Now, if I just suppress this, and we go to make a joint, and we just snap a snap a joint in there, click apply, so now what you can now see is we've now got we've got multiple different options here, but what we now have in here is if you see there's a thing called drive. And drive allows you to adjust the offset. Now, I'm, I've lied to you slightly here because the cylindrical constraint can also include an angular constraint, which at the moment isn't constrained to anything. But you see, if I go to linear, what you can now see is that you can, see you can now make it go back and forth. Click OK. And you see, you can now shunt it back and forth. And you see, you see if I make the end 80, get there. And you see it goes back and forth. Now you can do the same thing, I'm just going to have to find another constraint. Here and here. And you see now, if I then drive that to 10, I can specifically now... Okay. And there you go. And so now what you can now see is... Where's the, where's the piece? It now spins, but it's now fixed in place. But if I now then just suppress it, it's now the cylindrical is the only one taking over. Makes sense? Good. Now if I just close that one, because they're the only two constraints you need to focus on. Now where it gets good is if you now go into Inventor Studio. So if you go into Environments, and you go to Inventor Studio, and it's going to load you into the Inventor Studio, and then you then go to Animation, and you go to Constraints. Animation kernel's not active. Click OK. And what you now see is that your joints have just kapoofed out of nowhere which makes them less useful if you want to actually animate so what we can now do is if we just do uh, suppress you and then we just unsuppress both of these boys what you can now see is you've got the spin of the cylindrical but you now you see we've now got can't move it so now you see we then just go back to environments we go to invent studio we go to constraints and what you can now see is we now have Two constraints to play with and the main one I'm going to play with is mate 4 because that's just the offset and so you see what you can now say is I want to go start from start from zero uh, no let's go to one let's throw 100 in there and start and let's say over the course of three seconds click OK and what you can now then do is you can scrub over three seconds and you can animate it something you can't do with joints which is a really elegant part of constraints my current stance on it is I just use constraints where I can, let's just have it. But I do use joints in the case of things like rigid because using three where I can clearly define it and rigid doesn't misbehave because it is just rigid. It just, make, just makes sense, you see here. Go here. You got rigid which removes all degrees of freedom and cylindrical. They're the ones I mostly use. Everything else is just constraints. I just like the flexibility. It's mostly personal taste. But yeah, that's pretty much it with constraint. That's pretty much with constraints and joints and the kind of rivalry between them. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.